Katie. And I'm Stephanie. And we are here to bring to you week four of Unexplored Bible Stories. Could you open us up in prayer, Stephanie? Absolutely. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you that we have another day to love you and another day to learn about you. I ask that you bless the rest of this day and help us have a lot of fun. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen. And if you do this thing, they will serve you. They will love you. 
and your kingdom will do great. So he thought about this. He's like, well, okay. But then his friend came, and his friend, who he had known for since his youth, he came and he says, what are you talking about? He said, you, if you're really a man, you'll make the, their burden harder. You'll increase their yoke. It'll be, you should definitely make it way harder on them. So Rayvon thought about that too. He had two options. And so three days came around and Israelites came back. And, he, and they said, okay, what, what's your decision? And he said, whereas my father loaded you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. Whoa. He totally went completely against those who advised him, right? The wise people. Because wise people don't just get placed in those situations or are called wise because they're just mediocre people who have no experience. No, 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 no. The people in, that were advising him were experienced, were with, they had so much wisdom to give. But he didn't care. In fact, he was kind of he was kind of involved in peer pressure. Where peer pressure is um, has to do with your peers, which are people your own age, people on the same level as you, convincing you to do something that you should not do. And Rehoboam, that's what he did. He decided to listen to his friend, who did not know nearly as much as his advisors. And do you know what happened? The Israelites did just what they said. Since Rehoboam inflicted so much hardship on them, they yeah. rebelled. And they so many people left Israel. So the, the kingdom was actually divided in two parts, Israel and Judah. And to this day, they are still separated because Rehoboam ignored the wisdom of his advisors. So he got into so much trouble. Just like Adeline got stuck in all those vines, Rabo got stuck in a lot of trouble. So Katie and I wanted to bring up peer pressure about this story. It is so easy to have friends who might not give the best advice, right? Sometimes we make friends with neighbors and they're awesome kids, but you know, sometimes, sometimes we, we meet people who don't necessarily have the same morals as us. And they might be like, hey, hey you, Let's go do this super fun thing that your parents don't know about or that your parents told you not to do. How about we go do that? They'll never know. And then you have the same choice that Rainbow has. Hmm. Do you listen to the people you respect and that are wise, like your parents, who told you not to do that for a good reason? Or do you listen to the, um, your peers who tell you you should do it? See, that's the same dilemma that Rehoboam had. Peer pressure or listen to the wise people. And he chose to listen to the peer pressure group, his friend. And he got in total trouble. Just like we would get in a lot of trouble. It's really important when you don't know exactly what the right thing to do is, to go ask your parents. Or go some, ask someone who is wise and that would know. So, we wanted to leave you with that message that it's really, really important to listen to the people in authority over us. The people that God has placed specifically in your life to direct you into the places you should go. Sometimes we have small decisions to make. Like, should we go or should we stay? Other times it gets really big and our life could depend on it. So, with that, we're going to move on to our creature report about an animal who lives in the vines. Katie, what are we gonna be learning about today? We are gonna be learning about the spider monkey. Well, monkeys are awesome, first of all. They're just super awesome. I know a lot of people who love monkeys because they're so fun and they're a lot like us. Now obviously, we didn't ever come from monkeys. But they kind of look like people sometimes because they're so, um, they're full of expression and they've got long hands and long feet like we do. But they have a tail, which is like way different than us, obviously, right? So let's start off with a couple basic facts about the spider monkey. First of all, it lives in Central and South America. So same places our other animals really reside. It's about two feet long 
which I am a little over three, which means it's probably about here, actually. That's pretty big. And it's an omnivore, which if we remember, it eats fruits and small animals. But the monkey really mainly eats fruit, so that's an interesting fact. It can eat bugs, but it's not its favorite thing. And um, most of, the, of these monkeys have black faces. So that's this, this black color is normally what they're going to look like. And so now a couple interesting facts. Their tail is longer than the length of its body. Whoa. It's so long and it's super strong. It's kind of like their fifth limb. They can hang themselves um, from it and so they can dangle. Um, I saw this really cool picture of a monkey, uh, one of the spider monkeys, wrapping its tail around a branch and just hanging from it to drink from the water below. That's really cool. And it can also use its tail to pick fruit off of trees. So, very useful, I think. And another thing is they don't have thumbs. So they have four, um, four digits for hands, and they are super long. So if you look at your hands, think of a monkey with even longer fingers. And they use that to grab vines because actually they don't really hop around. They, they swing from the vines and from the branches, which is actually really cool. And they yeah. use their tail for a lot of that because it's strong and helps them stay up so they don't slip. And um, they also use their tails to hug people. I mean, to hug themselves. Um, yeah, so that's a, one of my favorite features. So when they greet each other, they actually come up and they give them hugs and they, they'll wrap their tails around to say hello. And their last fun fact is that they don't travel alone. So they travel with about 35 people, I'm sorry, not people, monkeys, and um, they call these troops when they go out and forage. So they like each other and they like being with each other in the vines. So, can you imagine always having 30 people around while you're walking around? Never alone. That sounds <laughs> really nice. Okie dokie. Let's move on to our craft about the monkeys so we can remember the vines in our life. Okay, what do we need, Katie? First, we're going to need a paper plate, paper, scissors, either ribbon, or a popsicle stick and tape to make this beauty. Yep. <laughs> so we're gonna make um, a monkey mask. Yeah, a monkey mask for you to play around it. And um, yeah, you can either use ribbon to tie it around your face. You can run around and be a monkey, or you can hold it, kind of more like a masquerade kind of a masquerade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you hide behind it. So. Let's get started. Okay. Once you've got your supplies ready, you yes. of course. You want to get the crayons. Okay. Okay. Now you want to fold this in half. Like that. And then you're going to make eyeballs. So whatever length you think your eyeballs are going to go, you put it there. Okay. It looks like she's cutting about halfway down. Half Kind of a little bit halfway to here, and then making my like ball, making a loop a little bit. Light very cool. It's almost the shape of a heart. Yeah. Or the Ten Commandments, where you usually see the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it should look like that. And then you adjust it mm -hmm. whatever way. It's too small, too big. Just remember to bend it in half as you work on it. Now you only have to cut one, and they're the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to cut this one a little bit longer. After that, we're going to do the ears and the tongue. So for the ears, you just make ears like loops. Okay. They look like this. You can cut them back. Yes, yeah, see this? We have them movable, which is very fun. And then, after that, you'll want to make the head, which is, you can go like an egg shape, or you can do like an oval shape. Depends on what you want, you want to look like. Yeah. And same with the, the ears, whatever size you want. 
want to make them. I'm looking at this picture right here of um, the spider monkey, who looks like a spider monkey. Um, but his ears are very tiny, so they don't stick out a lot. But it's kind of fun to make the ears big because a lot of times monkeys have really big ears. That's just kind of what they look like. But yeah, you guys will have to tell me what you guys think about the spider monkey. Because it really does remind me of a spider since his long, the limbs are so long. But they don't have nearly as many eyes as a spider does, which is good. Because that would be creepy. Yeah, it would be creepy. Okay, now I've got all my pieces. I have decided to go for an oval. And now you can draw your pieces. Like I'm gonna draw a face like I did with this one. Uh oh, this little guy. You might want a gray on this now. You can blue. Tape might not work the best. Here. I would recommend blue if you did not school sick, which is my first color. So fun! Yes. Like, pop up. Yeah, it's like your pop up. Here we go. Here we go. 
Kitty is a monkey. <laughs> we greet each other. We greet each other. Because monkeys greet each other with hugs. <laughs> okay. This is very funny. Okay. So now we're going to move on to our verses. So Psalms 25, 5. Now, I want you guys to put your things away or just move it out and step in front of it like Katie and I are going to do. Okay, so now that you stood up and you got some space between you and whoever you're with, we're going to start our verses. Now, Katie and I are going to do the whole thing with you. So we're going to do the motions and the words. Okay, so here we go. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you, I wait all the day. Let's do it again. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you, I wait all the day. Good job. Okay, now we're going to have to do something crazy again. Do you have any ideas, Katie? How about we jump up and down? Okay. 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 Now we'll say it with you and do the hand motions and jump at the same time. That means you've got to jump too. Okay, ready? Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you, I wait all the day. Good. Now you're going to say it all by yourself on one foot. Okay, here we go. I think our viewers are getting very good at their balance. We've been doing this so much to you, torturing you, helping you guys get exercise, right? Okay, what well, you guys did awesome with Psalms 25.5. We really wish we could be there with you. We say this every week and we'll continue to say it because we really mean it and we really miss each and every one of you kiddos. So we can't wait until you guys can be here with us again. And hopefully we won't have to finish out the entire series over video, but we probably will continue to do all these things and we hope to see you soon. So with that, we bid you goodbye.